Welcome everybody. This episode, we are going to talk about customer orders. So we've built a list of customers and each one of these customers could have a list of orders. Being inside of NoSQL, this could be nested data within the same document. It could also be a separate document somehow referencing each other. However, the way we're going to structure it in our MongoDB database is a nested array of orders. Here is a small proof of concept for this idea where you can actually filter by a specific customer. You know, maybe you want to grab the person with the first name equal to uh, whatever that value is and you can get those orders for that person. This is all mock data and I'll tell you how to get to this point. But what I ultimately want to do is to be able to go from customers and view each one of these customers' orders. Currently, this button does nothing. Are you looking for a file uploader that works well with React? FileStack covers everything from simple file uploading to image transformations. Check them out. I'll leave a link in the description. So let's head over to MongoDB and we'll view our collections. I went through a small example here where one of these, actually two of these, have an orders array. And inside of here, we have a single order, which is an object containing a description and a price. If you wanted to have multiple orders for a specific person, what you could do is you could go in here and add a new element to the array. So we're going to click this plus and add item after zero. This is going to have index one, and this type is going to be object. Now we can have those nested properties. Description, and uh, let's say we built an app and then we'll also have a price kind of right now my different services you know if I was building an application to keep track of my work you could design it however you wish the principles will be pretty much the same so let's say we charged seven hundred thousand dollars okay sounds good update so now we have two orders for that specific customer now how do we actually get this information in our application well, I know we have an API endpoint for customers, so you can go to API slash customers and get all that customer info. And because this is returning the entire customer object, we can see the orders on those two customers. So we have orders and orders. So in theory, we can make a single API request and get all of the information we need. The next thing I want to do is to just get a basic table displaying on our web page, which we can then learn how to feed data to that so it actually displays customer orders versus just hard-coded values. So we are going to build an orders page. Now we already have a customers page. It's going to be pretty similar to that structure there. So we will have an orders folder. And then inside of here, we can have an index.tsx. Now before we define a function and everything, there's actually a really good example that we can take from the material UI docs. So we can just copy and paste in here. So if you search material UI data grid, this is going to give you the ability to create tables designed for displaying a bunch of data. This is at mui.com slash x slash react data grid. And there are a bunch of different pages you can read through to learn more about this. The first thing is to install. So we'll say npm install at mui slash x data grid. So we'll take this. Oh, come on. Note to material UI if you split this out into two different ones and you can just click the copy button, that'd be ideal. So in terminal, we will install this package. So far so good. Now from the React Data Grid page, we will go off of this example so we can show the source. And we can actually just take the whole page. So I'm just gonna copy it and paste it here. And magically, we don't have any problems. I'm just going to do some renaming, change this to orders, and we'll save. We should be able to now go to slash orders after we start the site, of course. Gosh, sorry, I'm always being such a disappointment. And it's going to work. It just works. This is like so easy. So yeah, that's pretty crazy. And the reason it already has a theme and everything is because that theme surrounds everything as we described in earlier videos. So what I'll do is I'll go over to the index file for the orders and I'm going to surround the entire thing in a container which will help center it on the page. So before I save you can see now everything is spread out so this is all the way over here and this is all the way over there. When we import container 
and save this file, it'll now be brought into the center, which just looks a little bit nicer. Now the way this works is we have objects for the different columns, and then we have objects for the individual rows. I'm going to implement this very similar to the customers page where we will just get the data and get static props. This will allow that data to be static. And in this example, we're also using use query to get updated data. So let's try to implement this. And we're also going to type our page to next page. So here we are back in our orders. I'm gonna change this up a little bit. So let's go ahead and say const orders. And I will assign this an arrow function just for consistency. And this is going to be of type next page, which we can import from next slash types. And you can see that here. Next, we will define get static props. So we'll say export const get static props. This is going to be an async function. So it will look like this. And we'll get data, which we'll use await get customers which we defined in an earlier video. But if you want to take a peek at that, this is what it looks like. Now we will return an object which will have props. And inside of props, we will have orders. And we can say data.map. This is going to take an arrow function with each one of these being a customer. And we will return customer Dot. And you can see that type doesn't exist on our customer type. So let's take a look at that type, which I believe is defined um, over in our customer page. So right here. Now we can have orders, which will be an array of order. What in the world is an order? Well, we can define that type here as well. So type order. And we'll capitalize that. And I guess we will export this as well if we need to use it in other files. And this is going to be defined as a description, which is a string, and then an amount, which is a number. Or actually, I think it's cost. I keep getting these mixed up. Let's just check against the database. So orders, ah, price. I was wrong for both of them. So we'll change this to price. Now we will return customer dot orders. We can also type this. So we'll say, of type get static props and we will import this and now we can have a revalidate of 60 which shows up since we typed it now what I want to do is down here we will have props this will be sent to props to which we can console log props and then lastly we'll just need to export this because I think I messed that up when I changed it to an arrow function so we'll just say export default orders. Then we just have to make one or two changes, which is to actually return from this arrow function inside of map. And if that customer doesn't have an order, we could just return null. So you could say or null. And now we get these orders in the console, which you can see them listed here. This isn't quite what I want because now I just have an array of a bunch of arrays where I really just want a flat array containing all of our orders. So there's probably some super easy way of doing this with a different query to MongoDB, but I'm a dumb idiot. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to use the flat method and we will say one layer deep. And what this will do is it will now condense everything together so that we have the exact same thing. I actually just think it needed refreshed. So now we have an array of objects. So we have three orders and then we have a bunch of nulls. So maybe there's a way I could say return customer orders if they have some, but I'm not entirely sure if I do if customer dot orders, then return customer dot orders removing this null here. This doesn't quite work. So as you can see, I'm still getting this error. So let me know if you know the fix for that, but what we can do is we could get rid of this if statement we were just testing out and use dot filter, which we can use to filter out things that are null. So this will take a function where each element in this filter is going to be an order object. And now we just do a Boolean if that order exists so we'll just say not equal to null. If this evaluates to true, it'll include that order in our final list. 
And now taking a look, we should have an array of three orders. Awesome. I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing this using for each. So let's go ahead and comment out these lines here. So now we're just returning data. And what I'm going to do is actually instead return orders. And we're just going to craft this array. So we'll say let orders be an empty array. And we'll just say this is of type any. And then data dot for each taking an arrow function where each one of these is a customer. If the customer orders exists, that means they have orders, in which case we can then grab each individual order with saying customer.orders.forEach. Each one of these now is going to be a specific order. So we will call this order. And now we should get that order here, which you can console log if you want to see that in the terminal, which is going to show up on the back end. So here is an example of an order. Here is another example and another example. All I have to do now is append it to that orders array. So we'll say orders dot push passing in that order. Now taking a look at the props passed to the front end, well we have the same exact thing but written in a different way. I prefer this way actually and in fact I'm actually going to customize the object given to the orders array. So what we could do is we could take all of the properties from the order and then we can add any properties we want such as the customer that this order comes from and here we could say customer dot name as an example. Now taking a look at the front end data, we're going to have a new property on each one of these, which is the customer's name. Now all we have to do is take these orders and display them in the table, which shouldn't be too bad. All we have to do now is go into here and where we have rows, set this to props.orders. We have one problem here, which is just the typing. I'm trying not to worry too much about types at this moment. This should get us closer, but it's not going to be quite right. You can see it is complaining, and this has to do with the ID, which is how Material UI builds these tables. I was tinkering around with this and thought, hey, maybe we could add an ID to the MongoDB documents. So if you wanted to do that, you can go into MongoDB, open up any order. Expanding this, you could add a property underscore ID, giving it an object ID. And this underscore ID is just a convention for the object IDs. So if I wanted to do this, I could go in here and let's go ahead and edit this guy. We will add a field to zero and call this underscore ID. This is going to be of type object ID. And that'll just give us an ID automatically, which makes things pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do that for this one as well. Now, if, if you were building an API around this, you could add that ID in. We're just kind of building it all manually, so it's a little obnoxious. But hopefully, you don't have to spend too much time doing this. Alternatively, you could just use a random ID inside of your code. Okay, so that should be good. We will hit update. And now we have IDs for all of these. So that should be good. If that is the approach you want to take, then all you would need to do is just say what the ID is going to be, which is going to be the order dot underscore ID since material UI is looking specifically for an ID property. And then this underscore ID property is what we could use for that property, which we could just add to our type. So ID is going to be an object ID from MongoDB and give that an underscore as well. So now we don't have any problems and we should be able to get a basic table show up on our front end. So far so good. It's not exactly what we are looking for, but we are making progress. As you can see, each one of these has an order ID. Now what we need to do is we just need to set the columns up to match the different properties for these objects. So we could have the customer instead of first name, last name, and then the description and price. I'm going to get rid of this comment here since we're not going to be using that approach anymore. And now we can take a look at the columns. So columns is defined up here where we have field ID, field first name. Let's go ahead and change this to customer. We can also change the header name to customer and we will just get rid of this last name altogether. This will be description. And this is going to be a string here, I'm assuming is what it's going to take. And then field price, header name will be price. This one we'll say type is number. And I'm just going to get rid of the description. 
and you can customize all of these settings as you wish. I'm just gonna get rid of this here. Okay, so we have our columns, customer description, and price. Taking a look at our site, it's looking pretty good. We gotta fix this price here, so let me just make sure I type this out all correct. So inside one of these objects, we are going to have a price, which actually is this nested object number decimal. I'm just going to change that so that it's price is price dot number decimal. And this will be on the order. We will just now need to modify our price structure a little bit. So instead of this being number, it's going to be an object with a number decimal property, which appears to be a string based on what's shown in the terminal here. MongoDB also has a decimal 128 type that you can explore if interested. So that is something that can be imported. So maybe that would be a better solution, which represents the decimal 128 type that we used inside of MongoDB. So checking in our data, I want to make sure that we actually have consistent types. So price here is of decimal 128 and I actually went in here and made sure everything was the same because I think I originally accidentally typed these out as strings. So make sure everything is of the same type for everything to be displayed the same. Also making sure not to have any typos in our field. We should have that value appear here now. Another thing I want to change is this is actually being displayed as a string. I want to convert it to a number which will allow us to sort it assuming sortable is set to true. And for the description, I want to increase the width of this, let's say not 2,200, and that should be a little bit better. So now when we take a look at our site, this is what it looks like. And we can filter by price. So this is going to be unsorted. You can see it's grayed out. This is smallest first, and then this is largest first. I think the description could even be wider, so let's go ahead and set that to 400 maybe. Now, if you wanted to find something for a specific customer, well, you could hit these three dots and say filter customer equals Sal Brown, and now it'll only show data for Sal Brown, which you can then sort within that filter, so pretty cool. You can also hide on the front end, so if you don't need that value, it'll just go away. However, that's not a permanent thing, so you could change that back here in what's being displayed if you want to get rid of anything. So if you didn't want that ID, well, we can just get rid of it. And now that's no longer going to be displayed. Now, the next thing to wire up is from the customers page, being able to click view orders, which will bring us to the orders with that filter. So if it could automatically say customer is equal to John Smith, that would be pretty amazing. That is all I got in this video.